Hey gang, so welcome back to another video on force diagrams and this time what we want to do is we want to talk about a, a little variation on, on force diagrams when we have what are called component forces. So let's do a little review first to kind of explain this. Now we've talked a little bit about what makes objects move and we went over Newton's first law of motion, the whole idea that uh, objects are lazy. They don't like to change what they're doing and the only time they do change what they're doing is when they're forced to. So for for example, an object that's at rest, it's, it's lazy. It wants to stay at rest. And the only way we get it to, to speed up or to change direction or anything like that, or get it to move really, is to add an unbalanced force to that. Um, same thing with objects that are moving in a straight line at a constant speed. They want to keep moving it in that straight line at a constant speed. And the only way they're going to speed up, the only way they're going to slow down, the only way they're going to change direction is if we add what's called an unbalanced force to those. So just looking at this, and I know you guys have seen this before, the whole idea is that when we see a change in velocity, remember when, when it's, an object speeds up, when it slows down, or when it changes direction, we can infer that we have unbalanced forces acting on it. Otherwise, if there's no change in velocity, then we know that we have balanced forces acting on it. And that's why we do these force diagrams, to be able to show all of the forces that are acting on an object, and then be able to use that to explain the motion of that object. So just as a little review, we talked about, we used this example the, the other day, and what we had was this this guy he's pulling on a bucket of water out of the well that this wa this bucket is moving up at a constant speed so we want to be able to go and and show all the forces that are acting on this bucket and be able to explain that so the first thing that we do is we say okay well it's going at a constant speed so if it's going at a constant speed is it going to be uh, our balance forces acting on it or unbalanced well, that's, it, it's not changing, it's not accelerating. So that means that we have balance forces. So the total forces that are acting on it are all going to be equal but in opposite directions. So on this, where we drew the, the force diagram, we just took the bucket, we made a dot out of it. We know that gravity is pulling down on the bucket. Um, so the force of gravity on the bucket by the Earth is headed down this way. Uh, but what is causing it to to move up at a constant speed is that force of tension by on the bucket by the rope now because we know that it's moving at a constant speed those are going to be equal but opposite because they're they're balanced so i write that as the force of tension moving up this way the force of gravity moving down this way and those arrows should be equal length to show that they are equal but opposite but there's some, this is nice and convenient because it's going, this is all, this is all going straight up or, or straight down. Um, some of them we had, they're going side to side and it was nice and convenient. It isn't always that way. So let's take a look at what are called component forces. So I want you to think back to when we did the, the treasure map and how we, how we set that up. What we were doing is we were talking about vectors there and we, we talked about so let's let's say here I've got um, so here's here's our class so this is Spencer's class and down here is Rissy's class so how do we get to that well if if we're following the hallways we're gonna go over 20 meters to the east and then we're going to go 10 meters to the to the south okay those are the different components of our trip but if I wanted to draw a straight line right from my room to Mr. Rissy's room, we would do it this way, all right? That would be what's called the resultant. And there's really two ways that you can go about doing this. When we first did it, we went and made the, the, this 20 meters to the east and then 10 meters to the south and then drew the resultant. Now we're gonna go kind of like the opposite direction where we give you the force resultant and then have you make the x-axis component of that and the y-axis component of that. So let's do one of those together. So here we have two force or we have two force vectors and what we want to do is draw the x and the y components of that resultant force. So the way we do this is we always start right down here. 
all right? And I could either go this way and over or this way and over. It, it's the same difference. So in this case, I'm just going to say, okay, to make a, a right triangle out of this, I'm going to go up and over and kind of play pretend that those are straight lines. So this right here, this would be my y component. And this right here, this is going to be my x component. So if I add up my y component, my x component, this is what I get. This is my resultant. Let's do this one together. So I'm going to start right here, start from there, and I'm going to move over. Once again, play pretend that these are straight lines. And then, so this is along the x-axis, so this is my x component. And this right here, as I go down, this is my y component. So let's see what those have to do with, um, with our force diagrams. Because what you need to do is whenever you have forces that are at an angle, meaning they're, they're non-horizontal or non-vertical, we need to break those up into the x and y component forces to be able to show how those, all those forces relate to each other. So let's, let's take a look at this example right here. So here we have our water skier. And Mr. Water Skier is traveling along at a nice constant speed. So if he's traveling along at a constant speed in a straight direction, we know that, that those are balanced forces. So all of the forces, when we add them up, should cancel out. So if I take a look at this uh, force diagram that we have right here, so here this represents the, the skier. We know we have gravity that's pulling the force of gravity on the skier by the earth, so pulling down. We also know that right over here we've got the, the tension of the, the rope. So the force of the tension on the skier by the rope is pulling him this way. But we also have that normal force. Remember that normal force is that perpendicular force from the, uh, from the surface that we're acting on. So in this case, we have the normal force on the skier by the, by the water. And you can see that this is at an angle. All right, well, how do we go and do that? Or how do we go and figure out what happens when we have forces at an angle? Well, we have to break it down into its component forces. So if this guy is at an angle, I'm going to start right here. And I'm going to draw the x component and then the, the y component. Now, this is where it's, it's important because if I was just looking at these three, so one, two, three, it might be a little bit hard to see whether those are balanced or not. But when I break it down into the component forces, this is what I see. Here, so the force of gravity is acting in the, in the y direction, so it's pointed down. What other one do I have that's acting in the y direction? Well, it's going to be the y component of that normal force. And you'll see the way that it's drawn, it is, it is going in a positive direction, but it's the same length just in the opposite direction as the force of gravity. Same thing with the other force with the force of tension. The force of tension is headed in this direction, but how do we balance that out? Well, it's balanced out by the y component of the, of the normal force. So let's do one, let's do another one together. So here we've got a force diagram. It's, you've got a dad, he's pulling along a sled, a bunch of kids on it. Now you'll notice that he's pulling along at an angle. So what we want to do is create the force diagram and label all of those forces that are acting on it. So if we did that, if we're just looking at the sled, we're going to make that sled We're going to make that sled a little dot right in here. We're going to set up our axes. And we're going to figure out what's going on. So we've got gravity that's pulling down. We have the normal force of the ground pushing back up. And then we also have the tension of the rope as the dad pulls the, the sled along. So let's go in and take a look over here. And I want you to notice some things. So first of all, force of gravity is straight down. Normal force is, is perpendicular to the ground. In this case, it's straight up. You have, um, 
He's going along at a constant speed, so we know that it's going to be balanced. And if you've ever pulled along kids on a, on a sled, you know that there's some friction involved. So friction is headed in this direction, but how do we balance that out? Well, we're going to look at the, the tension force. So this guy right here. So since he's at an angle, we have to go and we have to create the X and Y components. And this is where the balance forces come into play. So we know that the force of friction needs to be balanced out. So in this case, the force of friction is the same length, just in the opposite direction, as the X component of the force of tension. Also, if you take a look at this, you'll notice that the force of gravity, in this case, it's bigger than the normal force. Okay, so why is that? If we, we're supposed to be having um, balanced, uh, balanced forces, well, in this case, you have two forces that are, that are balancing out the force of gravity. You have the normal force of the ground pushing up on the sled, but you also have the Y component of the force of, of tension. So if you, I add up this one and this one, they will, equal, they will be equal in ma magnitude, but opposite in direction for this guy right here. Now, one other twist that I want to show you. Let's say that we've got a squirrel that's sitting on a roof, and we want to label all of the forces that are, that are acting on it. Now, if I go and I draw this, If I do it the same way that I'd normally been doing it, I make the squirrel a little, uh, and make him a dot, and then I draw my, my axes. And then if I started, if I started to label the, the forces that are acting on them, I'm going to say, okay, so I'm going to have the force of gravity acting on the squirrel. I'm also going to have, now you notice that Squirrel is just sitting on the roof, okay? He's not sliding down, and the reason he's not sliding down is because friction is saying, all right, it's not going to happen. So friction is pointed this way. So we've got force of gravity here, friction going up this way. And then we also have the normal force, that force that's perpendicular to the, to the surface. Now, if I wanted to go and do all of this, let me, let me add this. So that's the force of friction. This is the, the normal force. If I wanted to go and do it this way, I'd have to break these down into X and Y components. And that's, I can do that. It's just, it's, it's a little bit cumbersome. So let me show you a way to get around that. If I have the exact same squirrel, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the X, Y axes, and I'm just going to twist it, twist it or turn it so that it's in line with the, with the angle of the roof. And this is, what, this is what happens. So if I go and do that, I'm going to say, so instead of having it be straight up, and now with this is my X and this is my Y, now I'm going to say, you know what, this right here, this is my X and this is my Y. And here's how that makes it easier. So now when I do this, I still have gravity pulling down towards the, the center of the Earth. I have friction that's going up here along the x-axis, and I, then I have the, the normal force over here. And what you'll notice is when you look at this right here, now instead of having two of these forces where I have to break them down into components, here I only need to do it with one of them, and that happens to be the force of gravity. And when I look at this, and I want to find the balance forces, okay, so the force of friction that's acting on it, that's balanced out by the, the X component of the force of gravity. And also, the normal force right here, that's balanced out by the Y component of the force of gravity. So that was a quick little explanation of what to do when we have component forces. Hopefully that makes sense, but if you have any questions, be sure to talk to me.